The Lord be with you. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Psalm 36. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like the great deep. Man and beast you save, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O, o God! The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. O continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your righteousness to the upright of heart. Isaiah 50 starting at verse 5, and this will serve as the basis of our devotion for today. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting, but the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced, therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Behold, all of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? Let him who walks in darkness and has no light trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. A reading from Hebrews chapter 9. When Christ appeared as a high priest of the good things that have come, then through the greater and more perfect tent, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, he entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption, for if the sprinkling of defiled persons with the blood of goats and bulls and with the ashes of a heifer sanctifies for the purification of the flesh, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works, deserving the living God? Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, since a death has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. In a reading from John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with him at the table. Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for three hundred denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, 
but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. The poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. When the large crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only on account of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to see him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus, and Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Grace, peace, and mercy be yours this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaiah is speaking of Jesus in chapter 50. Read just moments ago, he is pointing you to God's suffering servant, the one whom God would send for you. Isaiah says, the Lord God has opened his ear. Jesus has heard the word of the Lord. We recall the words from the Epiphany season when Jesus was in the temple as a 12-year-old boy. There he questioned the teachers as he heard the word of God. He heard from their mouths the prophecies that he himself had come to fulfill. And he did fulfill them all. Every one of them. The easy ones, the hard ones, every one of them. He would not be rebellious like Israel in the wilderness. Jesus would not turn his back again as Israel was tempted to do time and time again throughout the scriptures. For Jesus, it was only one direction, forward, forward to the cross. So he, in the words of Isaiah, gave his back to those who strike and his cheeks to those who pull out the beard. And he did not hide his face from disgrace and spitting. Notice that Isaiah does not say here that these things just happened to him in some passive way. No, he's in charge. He gave his back and face to those who did this. He is purposeful. He does this for a reason. To fulfill 
the word of the Lord, to offer himself for the life of the world. His life was not taken from him. He laid it down for the world and for you. This is meekness without weakness. Jesus is the strong one here, and those afflicting him, they are the weak ones. He's the durable one here as he bears the sin of the world that is being inflicted upon him. And he wants no revenge, not then, not now, not ever. He only wants to take all this for you and me in our place. And he is able, for he does not do this alone. The Lord God helps me, he says. He is not forgotten. He is not put out of grace. Men may have done that to him, but not the Father in heaven. Jesus will not be put to shame. Shame here, meaning to show that his faith, his trust, had been foolish in a God that cannot save. It looked that way as he was manhandled and beaten and crucified, but that's not what is going on. He was vindicated at the resurrection, shown that he was true and right all along. He was not put to shame. For he who puts his trust in God's word and promises will never be put to shame. And he says, the one who vindicates him is near. Even in his suffering and pain. Three questions come next in the text. Who will contend with me? Who is my adversary? Who will declare me guilty? Many did. We know the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin, the people led astray Pilate. But even Pilate would not declare him guilty of any charges. But this does not stop a world hell-bent on sin and death. When this world is controlled by sin and selfish desires, our own definitions of right and wrong, and when happiness is attained only in getting our own way, when satisfying your lust is the only thing that matters, this is what they do to God's servant. They lusted for his death, and they got it. Or so they thought. But God has a funny way of making his will be done in the end. And it was. When those who lusted for his death were shocked just a few short days later. When their victory was short-lived shown to be no victory at all. God's servant, God's suffering servant, is right. The Lord God helps me. And Isaiah now turns to us, to you, to listening to him today. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? That's what he asks. 
Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the voice of his servant? He has opened your ear to hear. And you have heard the word of the Lord. Have you been rebellious? Have you turned the cheek to those who strike? Have you always been meek? Or just weak in faith by defending yourself and striking out against others? If so, then repent. Repent. Because the Lord God helps you also. He uses his servant who suffered and died for you to atone for your sins, past, present, and future. Every one of them is placed upon him and not upon you. So while the godless will wear out like a moth-eaten garment, you who trust in the name of the Lord and rely on God your Savior will rise and stand with your vindicator on the last day. Because with him, you will not be put to shame. Amen. The peace of God that passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord until life everlasting. Amen. We pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. Almighty God, grant that in the midst of our failures and weaknesses, we may be restored through the passion and intercession of your only begotten Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.